Thank you, America, for liberating Hondurans from their votes in the 2017 election. We're at uh, the Sotocano Pomerola Air Base. This is the largest U.S. military base in Latin America. It is the center of U.S. influence, not just in Honduras, but across the entire region. And it's really why the U.S. is fighting so hard to preserve the corrupt and deeply unpopular government of Juan Orlando Hernandez because this country, Honduras, is strategically located and so it's a place where the U.S. projects its power towards Venezuela, towards Nicaragua, towards Cuba. In fact, during the 1980s, this base was a staging point for counterinsurgency operations by the U.S.-backed Contras overseen by John D. Negroponte in hunter-killer operations that killed as many as 30,000 people in a covert war inside Nicaragua against the socialist Sandinista movement. Right behind me you see a sign for an international airport that's under construction over there. But behind that is the air base and it's, it, it's absolutely massive. I mean, if you can see these mountains over here, the base extends all the way to the foot of the mountains. It's basically a city where some 500 to 600 U.S. troops live. Now, they claim that it's a Honduran air base, but that's just, uh, people in Honduras consider that an absolute joke. This is a U.S. air base. It's where the U.S. flies large Chinook troop transport helicopters to use in uh, the war on drugs operations across Latin America, also Black Hawk helicopters. Um, which are um, smaller troop transport helicopters that have offensive capacity are based here and larger U.S. aircraft. Uh, you can see right here some graffiti and it says Fuera Ho. There's actually graffiti that's been put all over the walls of this base which is Fuera ho, fuera gringos, people in this country are outraged that this base is here because it's, there's no war going on in this country and this base is actually the source of the repression that so many people feel. It's where Honduran military train with the U.S., especially the Honduran military police who are used as a private Praetorian guard for Ho, Juan Orlando Hernandez, the repressive and corrupt U.S.-backed regime which has stolen two elections. Let's walk over here. Let's go under this sign. Up here you're going to see the entrance to the air base and you can see uh, military personnel with their cars here. I'm not sure if we're supposed to be here or not but you know we're going to go up there and there is uh, what looks like a, a World War II era like P-51 Mustang plane, a replica of one and you can see some of the facilities up here. Uh, I don't know, these are taxis and cars for people coming out of the base. But just to get a sense of how big the base is, let's go take a peek through the fence just to get a sense of how massive this complex is. Uh, this is actually the only real U.S. military base in Latin America since the ousted uh, progressive Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa uh, removed U.S. military bases from Ecuador and he said that he would allow the base to stay in Ecuador on one condition, which is that Ecuador gets to have a base in Miami, and of course the U.S. refused. Here, let's take a look in here. Just pop that through there. You can see some uh, golf carts to escort U.S. military personnel, and you know, this is what it looks like. Uh, and again, the base extends all the way to the foot of that mountain. Here, let's walk over to the entrance. Hope I don't wind up with a sack over my head. I mean, this was a literal death squad center. This was the death squad center in Latin America. Um, but you know, I'm an American. This is my tax dollars at work, and I demand a look. Thank you, America, for liberating Hondurans from their votes in the 2017 election. All right, so, yeah, cool little plane. We got some little little mortars. These are like tiny little mortar bombs. I, I don't think you could fit a 12 year old in there, but you know, it's a tribute to the greatness. It actually has uh, a Honduran flag on it. And this is, you know, from the Honduran Air Force. This is the planes I guess they get. I don't know. They don't get the best 
technology. They certainly don't get what the Israelis get. Speaking of the Israelis, Honduran media is reporting that 1,000 Israeli soldiers are either on the way to Palmarola Air Base or are here. Israel is one of the top three military partners of Honduras. It's part of the relationship that Honduras has with the United States. The other one, of course, is the Israel of South America, Colombia. Now, what are Israeli soldiers going to do in Honduras? Why are they here? Well, they're supposedly here to train the Honduran military in counter-migration tactics. In other words, in keeping Hondurans in the panopticon that the United States has built for them. And so they're deploying from here to the Salvadoran border, which is just down this road here. And we have actually heard reports from the human rights group Copin, which we're going to visit later today, that Israeli troops have already deployed by the border. So the tactics that apartheid Israel uses in repressing Palestinians and keeping Palestinians in ghettos and cantons and essentially open air prisons are now being applied here in Honduras through this massive uh, air base, military base, basically city for Americans. We saw some of those Americans when we arrived at the airport. The only other gringos had, you know, army rucksacks and uh, very clear military indications. It says no loitering, but uh, so we're, we're, we're violating that. Anyway, uh, very disturbing, you know. Consider America that a foreign power had a base like this in your country and was training military forces in your country as a kind of occupation force um, to repress American citizens. That's the reality that Hondurans face under a U.S.-backed regime that is spending more and more money on a military that's really its only base of support and taking money from the education sector, from the medical sector, from the meager social welfare sector of Honduras. And this is why people are in the streets protesting. This behind me is why Honduras is on fire. Really, uh, what's going on here I think is a secret that's being kept from Americans. The military, the U.S. military, says in its official literature that this base is for humanitarian operations throughout the region and for the war on drugs. And we know about the social damage that's caused in Central America and in the United States. But it's very clear that this base is also about maintaining the power and control of this U.S. client regime so the U.S. can maintain Honduras as a base for projecting its power geostrategically throughout the region. And that includes working with Israel and Colombia, two of the world's worst human rights violators, um, in order to do it. And, you know, we're speaking as Julian Assange is locked in a prison in Belmarsh in the UK, possibly to be extradited to the US. Um, you know, his cable, the cables that WikiLeaks revealed showed deep military collaboration between the Southern Command, SOCOM, which this is a base of. This is where General John Kelly spent much of his time before he became Trump's chief of staff, uh, when he was the head of SOCOM. Um, collaboration between SOCOM and the, the puppet government that came into power after the democratically elected president, Jose Manuel Zelaya, was elected. And we, we interviewed Zelaya. Our colleague Anya Parampil interviewed him and he referred to Assange as a prophet who helped him understand what was happening to him and his country. Bueno, Julian Assange is a symbol of freedom in the world today, tomorrow and always. He will be one of the people who in the future, in the future, as the great prophets. Now, one reason why I think that Assange is being so harshly punished is to make an example out of him. Because if we knew what was in State Department cables relating to this base, if we knew what was really going on here, it would be 10 times as shocking as the cables that emerged in 2009 during the coup. And it would completely accelerate the rebellion that's going on in the streets of this country. It would tell us so many things about the cynicism and sadism of our national security state. And so I think 
the reason Assange is being so harshly persecuted is to prevent another whistleblower from emerging to tell us what's going on inside the State Department, inside SOCOM, what's going on behind these walls. You know, we think about the Cold War, we think about the 1980s um, and the, the dirty wars, but the dirty war continues. The dirty war is continuing. And in speaking to Hondurans, we asked them about why people would come from poverty to join a Honduran military that represses other Hondurans. It's because they're indoctrinated into a mentality of anti-communism through the Christian right, which is a really powerful force here. And they tell these soldiers that when you see someone from the Libre Party, when you see a protester, they're a communist. And communism is an atheistic, satanic ideology, and you can and should hurt them. And it's that mindset that provides the psychological foundation for this base, for many people who join the Honduran military and want to emulate the American soldier, the Israeli commando, and the Colombian commando. And the military here, like the government of Juan Orlando Hernandez, who is under a DEA investigation, a drug enforcement agency investigation in the U.S. whose brother was arrested for narco trafficking. The military is deeply involved in narco trafficking and they rake in massive profits. And so this is sort of the way that being part of the military and being a U.S. tool is incentivized. You can actually make a fortune or literally make a killing off of drug trafficking. Again, we're, see, you can see more anti Juan Orlando Hernandez graffiti and we're now back at the civilian air base that's under construction and will supposedly be finished in 2021. According to that cab driver back there, and we're gonna get into our little uh, Suzuki rent a car and get the hell out of here. Anyway, I hope this was uh, informative. Uh, many Americans don't know that we have bases like this around the world, but this is again, the biggest base in Latin America, a base of US influence in the country. The reason why the US is backing such a repressive and unpopular government. And we're here with the gray zone to break the media blockade and bring you more reports like this.